Hello all. Before I started wiring everything together, I just wanted to put up a video about how I decided to lay out the components in the enclosure. As I discussed in a previous video, the power supplies are installed on a hinged mount. This allows them to swing up out of the way to access the components underneath for maintenance. With the power supplies moved up off the base mounting plate, there's plenty of room available in the enclosure for all of the components as well as wire management. For wire management, I'm primarily using wire duct. The wire management for the power supplies will require a different solution, however. For this, I chose expandable braided cable sleeve. It's an economical solution and a bit more attractive than nylon cable ties. The flexible nature of the nylon sleeve makes for good compatibility with the hinged mount. I'll move the power supplies out of the way for a better view of the component layout in the enclosure. Some of the main things I considered when developing the layout for the enclosure were electrical noise from high current devices, cooling and the airflow inside the case, clearance for connectors protruding through the case, the layout of components in the vertical axis for things that might be stacked, the physical location that wires will enter or leave the enclosure, and how wires will be routed in the enclosure between components. I also took into account that oil or metal chips could fall onto the enclosure, so there will be no connectors or fan ducts through the top. One of the easiest ways to deal with electrical noise is to keep high current carrying wires and components physically separated from lower current signal wires. Having the lower current on the right and the higher current on the left, 120 volts will come in on the left hand side and branch off to the line voltage components. The 120 volts will also feed the accessory relays. Another source of electrical noise is the high voltage output of the drivers. This is the high current output that drives the stepper motors. The output of the stepper motor drivers will be kept to the left away from the signal wires on the right hand side. I bought a couple of DIN rail terminal block kits that have grounding type terminal blocks as well as the common terminal blocks with a terminal on each side. I also picked up some DIN rail fuse holders. I'll fuse most of the components in the enclosure individually. Having a separate fuse for each individual stepper driver as well as the controller card and the 24 volt power supply separates out all the individual circuits and makes troubleshooting much easier if a fuse were to blow. At the top of the enclosure are the stepper motor drivers. I 3D printed a mounting bracket for the drivers that arranges them in a vertical stack. I'll mount the drivers so that the serial communication ports and the dip switches are easily accessible for configuring the drivers. The 7i76e Mesa controller card has several rows of inputs and outputs. The upper two rows are step and direction outputs that will be routed to the stepper motor drivers, and the alarm outputs on the drivers will be routed back to inputs on the controller card. Up here is an Ethernet port which will be connected to a PC running Linux CNC. To route the Ethernet cable from the computer to the controller card, I bought an Ethernet bulkhead fitting, which has an RJ45 port on either side. To bring the 120 volt mains power into the box, I'll use several of these C14 connectors. The reason it takes several of these connectors is because they're rated at 13 amps each. I've estimated the maximum current load for the entire CNC system to be a little over 30 amps. The stock mill is rated at 12 amps. The stepper motors and drivers and power supply would be around 7 amps. External accessories like a vacuum cleaner could be up to 12 amps and then a couple more amps for the controller card, 24 volt power supply, and perhaps a coolant pump. For the switched 120 volt outlets, I'll be using these NEMA 5-15 receptacles. The controller card will drive the relays, which in turn will switch the 120 volt receptacles. I'll mount the receptacles either in the bottom of the enclosure or on the left side. For the high voltage output from the stepper motor drivers going out to the stepper motors, I'll use these 16 millimeter aviation connectors. The 16 millimeters refers to the diameter of the hole required to mount them 
in the bulkhead or the enclosure. These are the same connectors that come pre-installed on the stepper motor cables. I'll mount the male end on the enclosure and the female end will get installed on the cable for the stepper motor. I've got an assortment kit of these aviation connectors that range from two pins to five pins. I may also use them for the milling machine limit switches. For cooling in the enclosure, one 24 volt cooling fan will blow air into the enclosure. The air turbulence in the enclosure will pick up any excess heat and a second 24 volt cooling fan at the top of the enclosure will exhaust any excess heat. I mount the exhaust fan near the stepper drivers because they are the components that are likely to generate the most heat. Since I've got some extra pieces of DIN rail laying around, I'll make up some custom DIN rail mounts for the relay boards using CAD and my 3D printer. Like and subscribe if you want to follow along. That's all I've got for now. I'm going to start wiring things together and I'll give you an update when I get the chance. Take care.